Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Group Chat, number one podcast in the world. Uh, unfortunately, this episode, we have to start off with um, some terrible, tragic, very unfortunate news uh, regarding the shootings in Nashville. Um, so we will discuss that. And then we talk about real estate prices, specifically residential. And then Apple uh, realizes a recession is coming and has decided to launch some new products. And then, of course, we have to talk about ChatGPT because that's just what you talk about every day. Yep. You just talk about ChatGPT. And um, we talk about weddings and a trial that and for some reason is happening again. And finally, we have an awesome interview with George Micaiah, who is the founder and uh, creative director of Crosty Shoes a luxury brand out of Georgia, not the state, the country. It's a fascinating story of how he got started and what the brand stands for. And of course, we got him to give us a discount code. Hot. Hot. Let's get into it. Cash. Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. It's a trillion dollars. Hot. Cash. All right, Kathy's, we are back with another episode of Group Chat. Uh, we have an incredible interview at the end of the episode, which uh, we'll discuss shortly. But first, we're going to get into some news. And generally, I like to talk only positive, forward-looking things that are happening uh, around the world. But unfortunately, we're going to kick off today's episode with the a tragic shooting in Nashville where um, uh, it looks like the final kind of number was three children and three adults yep. uh, were murdered. And uh, it happened at a private Christian school in Nashville. And the um, shooter was a 28-year-old, is it confirmed former student or no? Is that a rumor? I don't know. Yeah. So I don't want to like say yes or no. Um, that, uh, I mean, if you haven't seen the footage, I do not recommend watching it. It is horrific. Um, yeah, but it's, it's one of those things. It's a national crisis now. Yeah. So it's the leading cause of death for children. Yeah. Is gun violence. Which is crazy. So today marks the 89th shooting on school grounds this year. There have only been 86 days in 2023. Wow. That's insane. And, you know, I think the challenge is this is such an American problem. Yep. This is not existing anywhere else in the world. And if you look at the through line of a lot of these school shooters, it's all around this one particular weapon, AR-15. And for whatever reason, we can't get people behind legislation around this particular weapon. This is a politics problem, not an American problem. Yeah. Because assault rifles, banning assault rifles is very popular in this country to to enforce. Yeah. So I think it's 65% of Americans are in favor of banning assault rifles. What are 65% of Americans in agreement on anything? Yeah. In 2023. Ban TikTok? Probably. Yeah. Um, I think... I don't know what the politicians are afraid of at this point. I, I honestly think it's the narrative around first you take this, then you'll take this next. Yep. I actually don't think it's actually about the weapon itself. I think it's around this idea that once the government takes your guns, what will they do next? And I think that is the narrative that is keeping particularly the AR-15 around, uh, is my opinion. This is complete guess. I have no background around it. This is what I believe anecdotally when I hear people arguing on, on social media. Well, the politician's job, if you get voted by a majority of the people, is to rule for the majority of the people. So the yeah. majority of the people believe this. Yeah. So this is where I get confused. That's just pure data that the majority of people in this country want this thing banned. Yeah. The thing is, is like until a notable Republican congressperson makes a stand 
and then sees if, if it's a popular thing to do, then they'll get support. The problem is, is no, who who is going to, Th- that's the is problem. DeSantis going to go no there? Chance. Trump's no chance. not going to do it. No. So it's like. I really think that's like a big misstep. If a Republican just came out and said, I'm going to ban assault rifles as soon as I become president. Yeah. Or I'm going to get Congress. I bet you everyone's so scared in the Republican Party to even mention that because they think they're going to lose the base. Yeah. That they're too scared and it might actually benefit them. Yeah. At this point. Because you might get moderates. You might get moderates because these are happening in states that are, Tennessee is a red state. Yeah. And, you know, Nashville is actually somewhat liberal, right? Yeah. But the state overall is is red. And it's incumbent on people in those states to call their politicians. Because you know where where we live, our politicians all want to ban assault rifles. Yeah. Right? In Los Angeles area, you pick the congressperson. Um, so it's really going to take people in those states to lobby their their politicians. And, you know, in Texas, they expanded gun laws recently. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. This is a I national think- crisis. And these are children, man, like going to school. Horrific. And I think the the unfortunate thing about what's happening is the narrative that's being spun on this uh, tragic incident is really around the fact that this person was transgender. And that's what's really pissed me off because the Republican opinionists have just jumped on that. Yeah. And they're calling it a transgender issue. Yeah. All of a sudden, not a banning assault rifles. And yes. it's absolutely pathetic. And I think... That is the the challenge that this particular incident is going to have towards changing any laws, right? Like the fact that it was a transgender person, unfortunately. No, it, it it's because Republicans are so shameless that they just spun it off a gun issue and yeah. saying it's a transgender issue. Yeah. If you notice... The Republican opinionists are all leading the story that it was a transgender. Yeah. How is that relevant to having seven assault rifles? Yeah. Which were all legally purchased. Right. Yeah. And so, yeah, look, we're not gun experts. Um, we have our opinion on the matter. Um, I think if you need... But an I air- don't think it's about being an expert. It's, it's clear night and day. I agree. Of I mean, what the look, American people want. Forget anything else. The American people want to ban assault rifles. Yeah. I I, I just do not. Ne- I'll never understand the purpose of the AR-15. It, amongst civilians, there is no purpose. Okay. And then in for hunting, are you the worst fucking hunter? I think it's looked down upon. If you, I think you, you're a pussy yeah. if you have to use an AR-15 to kill an animal. Yeah. And I think you probably would be, I don't even think it's illegal. We don't even. Well, we only allow assault rifles to kill our children. Yeah, you can't kill a deer with assault rifles, right? And I just think that, like, I, I, here, here at the end of the day, like, there are a lot of things that people want to do that are just illegal, and, the, and you just can't do it. And the thing is, and like, it's fine. And the problem with the way legislation works is, I don't get why it is now clearly a national crisis. It's a leading cause of death. Why can't we make legislation in a vacuum? Why do we have to make it a part of this bigger bill that is going to take? Because everyone's got to eat. Everyone is on the take. Yeah. Everyone wants their pork barrel legislation for their society to give in on AR-15s. If you want us to do this, what are you going to do for me? Yes. It's actually not in the best interest of the American people, given that it's the leading cause of death of children, which is, and, and what sucks about it is, this is going to continue to cause a divide in where people send their kids to school. Uh, this is a private school. Yeah. Well, do you know what private schools in other cities look like? Like Fort fucking Knox. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's like, it's just a, a game of resources. Again, it's like so unfair. And in these states where they're much different when it comes to these particular laws i i mean i'm wondering like we there's plenty of people that listen to this podcast that live in nashville that have children how do you view the the, how do you wake up and deal with this 
It's, it's fucking it, tragic. Yeah, especially when your own politicians have no interest in solving it. No. So and, I mean, I, the pessimist in me, which I don't like to be, is if Sandy Hook didn't change anything, this isn't either. No, and and uh, unfortunately, that's my view as well. Is that I don't. But think, I do think you need to keep talking about it because you can't just accept it. I agree. I just. I think there was a Republican congressman. And he was like, he was like, we're not going to do anything. We can't do anything. Basically put his hands up. Right. This is just the craziest issue in America that I cannot believe we're not agreeance on. We are. The politicians aren't. Yeah. But there's enough people making noise to say, to, to cause concern for politicians. Well, it's not unanimous. That's the problem. It's not, well, nothing's unanimous. Unanimous is everyone. Yeah. This is the vast majority. See, th it's crazy to me. It's not unanimous that our children should be safe. Yeah, it's not. No, not at all. Only majority people yeah. believe our children. Only majority of people believe our children should be safe. It's fucking nuts. It's absolutely nuts. Um, anyways, you know, really sad, really tragic. And because the, the problem is like the other side, which is, you know, the Democratic side has given up trying to ban guns. Let's yeah. just start here. Let's yeah. start with proper background checks. Let's start with making it harder to purchase guns. No one's trying to ban the guns. No one's trying to take them away from you. No, you can have them. It's, it there just needs to be checks and balances on how you buy guns. The, this particular one probably should be banned. No, this one should be banned. Yes. I'm just saying it, it's not like we're trying to ban 300 million guns in America. That's yeah. not what anyone's proposing. Yeah. We know that's never happening. Yeah. And no one even talking about that. Yeah. It's starting with banning assault rifles, starting with proper background checks, starting with, you know, you can't just walk in and, you know, the gun shows and buying guns online. Like, it's a joke. It's easier to get a gun than anything. Yeah. Easier to get a gun than a bank account. 100%. Bank account is painful. I had to go through it. It's yeah. not easy. The amount of questions, the paperwork, it's bananas. Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand why we're still hung up on this one thing. It was one issue. It's the most polarizing thing that negatively impacts all Americans. Yeah. Completely this one agree. gun has caused so much hardship for our own people. Mm -hmm. It's terrible. Um. Well, you know, all we can do is keep complaining. And we have to. Yeah. Fair. All right, let's move on. Business news. Um, there's a lot of talk about real estate prices. Specifically, we've talked about commercial and their $20 trillion problem. Residential. Some numbers came out. Mm -hmm. Kind of scary in some parts of the country. Specifically San Francisco. 10% home price decline from January 2022. Yeah. To January 2020. That is staggering. And by the way, the layoffs just started happening the last three, four months. So another 10% is coming there. You would think. Like San I think Francisco's real estate crisis is crazy because you can make the argument office somewhat comes back in New York City. Office is not coming back in San Francisco. No, because that is they created this work from home culture. And they'll refuse to go back. Yeah. This is like the equivalent of like, you know, tribalism at, at its peak. So you will, not, you will not be able to get, even if Apple gets their employees, you're not getting. A Apple is being forceful about it. Mm -hmm. And I think they're happy. They're happy to let people leave. They don't give a shit. They know the one guy that created the phone. We're good. The rest of you can keep 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 rocking. Seattle, seven and a half percent decline over last year. San Jose, ten and a half percent. It looks like LA is around five percent. San Diego, five percent. Las Vegas, Phoenix, Salt Lake, five percent. Buffalo, New York, up eight point three percent. Miami, up twelve percent. Orlando, up nine point three percent. Most of the East Coast is up. Yeah, Buffalo's a little surprising. Is it because oh, the Bills are hot again? Josh Allen. Josh Allen, Kyle Pete, Allen. They're just, they're moving there because the of the Allens. Allens. <laughs> they might get a Super Bowl. Like, they're definitely one of the favorites. Um, it's really interesting that, and, and it clears, it. Seattle, major tech hub, Microsoft, Amazon, how many technology companies are there? San Francisco, obviously. And those companies are laying off. 
Exactly. And I think, I think the rest of the country, I think New York will have its fair share. I saw McKenzie laid off 1,400 people today. Really? Which, which is a lot. That is a lot. For McKenzie. And you know, McKenzie people make, they make bank. Yeah, no one's making 60 grand a year at no McKenzie. No one's under six figures. Yeah. They're all six figure bonus plus, plus, plus. And these are like arguably the most educated, smartest people in, in the country that are getting laid off. Disney announced yesterday 7,000. And that's the tip of the iceberg for Bob Iger. He's going all in. I, I, I wouldn't be, shut down the metaverse division at Disney. Yeah. And ESPN <clears throat> finally had their first round of cuts. Yeah. They've been cutting though. For years. But I think they it, it's part of the last announcement of cuts yeah. and on-air personalities are apparently going to get cut. Yeah. And so what we're seeing is it's still looking like upper end of workers are the ones that are still getting laid off. Yeah. Um, which I think is better for the economy, generally speaking. It's sad for those people and it's fucked up. But those people are most likely easier to get another job. They may not get the same comp package they got in the past, but I think they'll be fine. They'll lend, I mean, all, all these pe these companies are so hard to get jobs at. They're probably very qualified to get jobs anywhere else. But these housing prices are, are really interesting to me because like San Francisco and San Jose went down in the last year and the layoffs just started. Right. Like Meta, think about all those Meta employees that just get just got hacked. The home prices, are, so they're getting hit twice because the first is the work from home. Everyone went to more affordable cities as opposed to trying to like raise a family, like barely making ends meet, even if you make six figures in yeah. these cities. And then now they're going to get hit by the layoffs. Yeah. I think the the tough part is, is I, I've been reading these and articles. San Francisco is not that big. It's 700,000 people. Yeah. So you lay off... 30, 40,000 people. Here's, here's my, my gut tells me. If I was young, I'd go to San Francisco right now. And I wanted to be in technology. Mm -hmm. I would actually I move there. I agree with that. It's, it's definitely back from like a innovation. Is, is, there's a lot of company formation going and, on. And, and what people have to realize, and this is why I argued on why Miami could never work. Stanford is so fucking important to yep. the ecosystem of San Jose, San Francisco. Berkeley is so important. Those are two of the best colleges on earth. And two of the best engineering colleges on earth. I think they're two best, right? Or maybe MIT or yeah. whatever, right? So that ecosystem, you from an education standpoint, Stanford's hotter than ever. It's not like... Because tech is soft, Stanford's not popping. The best talent is still coming out of uh, the far. entire open AI team is Stanford people. Like yeah. it just it is what it is. That's the best school. For technology, no question. Yeah. And so no other college has taken that level of talent yet. It's not gonna be the University of Miami. Let me tell you that. Okay. The U the Canes. <laughs> yeah, the Canes are Final four canes. Yeah, it's not happening. Okay. So the reality is the best talent, engineering talent on earth is still in this region. P cost of living is coming down. Okay, San Francisco is going down way more still. There's plenty. It will become affordable for a 24-year-old with their first job to live in San Francisco again. It, that's happening. If it hasn't happened already, it'll happen. That whole area, these people that were making half a million dollars a year are gone. They're all going to get canned. Like you can't work at Salesforce, do nothing and make a million bucks a year anymore. Like no. it's just not happening. So all these organizations are going to get gutted. They will leave the city because fundamentally they're not true engineers. They're, they're like kind of the, the, the fluff of having an incredible product, which is like middle management, sales, all these types of people. And young people can go move and live there. I mean, it, it's like the cost of living will change everything. Because if you can get an apartment and get to live near the smartest people in the world, why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. No, I agree. I want to bring up um, something before I move on. Uh, David Einhorn, he's the founder of Greenlight Capital, legendary hedge fund investor. Yeah. And I think he started in 1996. So he's seen multiple cycles. And he was talking about the dynamic of what's going on. I've not heard one person. This is why like... 
hedge funds and the citadels make all the money because yeah. they're so freaking smart. Because I haven't heard this or read this from anyone. So basically what he said, the dynamic that's going on right now, there's about $17 trillion of in, uh, cash that's affected by interest rates. So that means bank accounts, your personal bank accounts, corporate bank accounts. Um, and then of the 17, five of the 17 is fixed mortgages for the most part. 90% are fixed mortgages. So these are mortgages that were- At 2%. Yeah, probably done before the Fed started hiking. And the other uh, 12 trillion are interest rate sensitive. So when interest rates go from zero to 4%, he goes, what you really have to think about it is that it's a half a trillion dollar stimulus. Yeah. So what we thought the tightening was doing was actually like a stimulus to the bill. And he said, this is not this, this is, is like the, people's the, checking accounts. Correct. You go from 0% to 4%. Four, 4%. Not everybody. That's not fair for everybody. That's not happening. You go to JP Morgan, chase up a checking account, you're getting 0.1%. Robin Hood's giving 4.4% right That's Robin Hood. Because it's, we don't know who's Robin who there. JP Morgan Chase, where more people have their money, is not giving you 4%. You have to move your money into a money market. You have to do something to get that. So anyways, the point is that if you just do round math, it's a, it's a half a trillion dollar stimulus, which is why inflation has persisted because unemployment yeah. is still low. Yeah. And now you've just given more people in their bank accounts yeah. that are just spending. I did. I, I was thinking about that from a perspective of like people with very large balances have moved their money into money markets, cash sweep accounts, seed treasury bills, and they're earning three, four or five percent. And if you're earning that risk free, you're probably just like, fuck it, keep spending. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I think that's probably why like the high end has not been impacted because it's actually if you're really rich, it's way better. Yeah. Risk free. Why do you want to put your money in the market? But so that's the, I mean, that's the thing. That's what he was saying that how it affects the real economy is like financial markets. It completely can upend, which yeah. it has. So I thought I haven't heard one person say that. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I also think that you got to cut rates then. Got to cut them. Got to cut them. Um, until then, Apple saves the day with Apple just announced their pay later product, which is like, you know, when everyone says like, wait till Apple does it or Facebook does it and it takes forever to, for them to do it, right? Like, you know, all, there's so many things like, oh, Apple can just launch a bike. Why would they ever buy Peloton? And everyone's like, oh, they're going to buy Peloton, blah, blah, blah. And then we never think it's possible. Then one day Apple just launches a bike and that's the end of that. What we're learning from the last decade was all of these venture back companies were basically experiments for big tech to pick apart what they want in their business. And the right thing for a lot of these things is... It's really, really hard to be independently successful when big tech can just watch and wait and do, like think about it from a perspective of Apple Pay Later. My guess, they'll have the lowest default rate. Why? They could turn off your phone. Yeah, definitely. Turn off your phone. You can't pay for this. You can't pay for that. What's the biggest problem with Klarna and Affirm right now? Default rates. Why? Because who cares if you don't play your car? Oh, you hit my, hurt my credit. You cannot not pay your Apple bills. Yeah, and I think this is obviously, the timing is obvious. We're heading into a slowdown recession. Yeah. So they don't, they held this card. Yeah. Like this wasn't, they developed it last week. No. They're just waiting to roll out what happens when in a slowdown. Yeah, we need people to keep spending. Mm -hmm. Here you go. Here's a little credit. You want you take four payments to make this $500 yep. headphones or whatever. And and I think it's just a it's just more of a explanation of how difficult it is to build a company in technology if you're not doing something so innovative because the threat of any of the big kind of four or five doing something makes it almost impossible to build. I mean, it's definitely very hard to compete with. And think about it, search was basically untouched. For what? How 20 years? How long has Google been the king? 15 years? Yeah, at least. 
Microsoft had to give some like experimental company ten billion dollars to give a shot at competing with search, and now it's a real threat. Right and yep. and no, you cannot go build a search company from ground up today. It's no, not they have too much data. Yeah, it's over. They need a new platform to be created, which is what ChatGPT is. Yeah, and it's like that, and 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 at the speed at which data is coming into the platform, it's just it's it's insane. The split amongst really smart people on Twitter on ChatGPT is pretty fascinating. So you have half the people that say this is the new platform, this is it. It's like when the internet came about, when the microprocessor came about. I think Bill Gates actually said that. Then you have a lot of people in tech saying... It's a fad. No, that it's actually not that good. And they actually use the gel man effect. Like chat GPT is good spitting out stuff when you have no idea what the subject is. But when you actually are... Uh, Paul Graham actually said this. Because if you actually know something about a subject matter... It's useless. It's useless. Yeah, I agree He with goes, that. it's kind of like American journalism. Yeah. And Elon Musk said yes. <laughs> well, I mean, that's a function of it hasn't ingested enough data. Yeah. You don't think it's going to get smarter in six weeks? It, it's not an old enough thing to make that call yet, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, chat GPT-4 is two weeks old, right? Yeah, and G three is four months old. You know, it's, it's still so new. Because what... The scary part is if it gets... To that level, then it's replacing cognition, which yes. is scary. I mean, we kind of—if you go on TikTok, we kind of replaced it already. It's gone. We're, <laughs> we're morons. As a society, we're morons. Yeah, maybe. You know more about dumb shit today than you did five years ago. You personally, hundred percent. Yeah, you are dumber today than you were five years ago, or more uh, cerebral. I would call it dumber. <laughs> I think you were a sharper person five years ago. And TikTok has ruined your intelligence. You don't think Hasbulla has enhanced my intellectual I mean, all ability? you talked about Hasbulla. <laughs> like, you would not have been talking about Hasbulla five years ago. It's just you're obsessed with him. You're some, you're some, some 20 year old guy in where is he from? Eastern Europe. Yeah, exactly. That's your obsession. You're always talking about Hasbulla's doing this. It's really sad he left America. <laughs> This is real life. You're a dummy. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then I also consumed the David Einhorn interview. Okay, that's fair. That wasn't on TikTok. No. Exactly. Um, speaking of ChatGPT, one of the interesting takes that I've seen is um, instead of trying to create the next ChatGPT and the next open AI company, like it's over. They won, in my opinion. I think they have too much money, too much resources. The 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 server bill of OpenAI is bigger than the entire AI industry, like it, it today, right? And so, my view is, and and I and I've seen a lot of people say this is like, don't try to compete with them there. Instead, build on top of what they've already given you. Find your way to participate in that ecosystem. And so, plugging plugins are happening now on ChatGPT four with Instacart and Yelp and all these things from reservations to recipes to it in theory sounds amazing. The problem is, in my opinion, you still need to prompt it correctly to get the result you want. That requires like an intuitive behavior by the user to get you to the end result. Like chat GPT is really, really good if you know how to use it for your benefit. But I don't know if the average person is going to think through it the way that you need to use it. So I think also it's going to be very challenging to be a technology entrepreneur going forward. Because if you think about the types of companies that were built 2008 on, mm -hmm. most were just tech enabled real life businesses. So you saw real life problems. And yep. then you use technology to build out the product, like an Uber, an Airbnb. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be, obviously, many unicorns created from this new boom. But I think it's going to take a real technical skill set as a founder, which didn't wasn't required 10, 15 years ago. Because when you think about how- 10 to, years ago, I think there was. Five years ago, it went out the window. Like the, most of these founders in the last five years are not technical. 
Yeah, and I think the ones who are going to win on AI, not just start saying AI in their pitches, are actually going to have to be really technically sound to figure out what's defensible. Yeah. Have you played it on Mid Journey at all? No, but I, I, I saw the, the Pope drip. And then Trump. Trump and Obama. Trump getting uh, arrested. Arrest. Trump running away from the cops. It's dangerous. It's so dangerous. It's so dangerous. Everything is fake. Like it's all fake already. Like it's it's kind of Pope was wearing Balenciaga. Yeah, that was like, and the guy was like, I was just on drugs and thought this would be cool. Like, and it think about how many people saw that and believed it. I thought it was real. I had no idea. I was like, oh, Pope's got Trump some drip running away from the cops. If you like, were told and you don't follow social media news that closely, like all what over the percentage news was that Trump was ar being arrested last Tuesday. It didn't happen. If you heard that on Monday and then someone sent you this, I can't believe they're trying to catch him. He's getting away. You would believe it. Uh, okay. So let's, let's take into consideration what percentage of Americans over the age of 30 know what chat GPT is and know that everything is fake now? 30? I would say 30 to 40 majority have heard of chat GPT. But do they understand that like... Everything can be fabricated? Yeah. Like that picture. That picture went so viral of Trump getting arrested. Yeah, I don't think it wouldn't have, it would have gone viral if people didn't believe it was true. Yeah. It was sent in my chats as like, how funny is this? I have a hot take for you. I think Sam Altman will be the most hated person in the world in five years. I think AI gets pretty ugly pretty quickly. Yeah. This is Sam Altman's like those movies where yes. like the mad scientist is in yeah. the lab. And he let, and it, he he let it loose. Into, yeah. He let it loose. He should have never let it loose. You know, like when you watch them like mo old movies and the government has a secret lab and they're protecting like Area 51, mm -hmm. right? Where in New Mexico, they're hiding all the alien technology, whatever, whatever you want to believe. I think that's the right move. Some shit we don't need to know about. We do not need to know that like this weird dropper can eliminate humanity. I don't want to know that shit. I want to have a very simple life. I want to hang out with my kids. I want to go to dinner once in a while. I want to go out once in a while. I want to go to Coachella. Like I want a simple life. I don't need to try to fucking solve every goddamn problem on earth with technology. Chat GP or OpenAI should have stayed as a nonprofit. Yeah. And, but because these libertarians, they hate the government. Yeah. It's really like, should have been like a CIA top operation. I wouldn't we be don't surprised know. like a China just bans AI. A lot In, of their social commerce platforms are all built on AI. They were way ahead of I know, stuff. but I, I think that's fine. I'm comfortable with business to business use cases for AI. 100% I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it being a co-pilot for Excel. I like the PowerPoint uses I've seen. I like the, the added value it gives you on a lot of your business applications. I'm fucking terrified of it creating consumer content. I'm terrified of- the, Chaos, yeah. Yeah. The, like if we thought uh, misinformation on Facebook and Twitter affected elections, what's AI gonna do? Yeah, it's gonna be way worse. We haven't had an election since their product has released. Yeah. A national election at least. Yeah. Do you imagine the people are just going to say, my guy got elected and show a picture of it? Or they'll say like, oh, this person got was, arrested. Yeah, arrested. Because all like, remember the Hillary Clinton had like, the, was it the child porn ring, the pizza yeah. gate or whatever? Yeah. That's going to be so much more believable in the way the content. Because you could have a picture of it. And the pictures are getting better by the week. Yeah, it's crazy. Before the hands were a little off and like, you know, you'd see his skin lines and you could kind of tell it was fake. In six months, it's going to be perfect. Yeah, we pretty much don't need to go anywhere. <laughs> I see people like uh, mid journeying their like skiing photos. Like, ah, I didn't need to go skiing this year. Got the photos. Yeah. And, 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 and think about it from like a, a relation standpoint. I saw someone that's creating like a sex chat GPT basically just you can have a relationship with a person how many people just want companionship yeah and you have a machine it goes oh, I'm feeling sad why are you feeling sad Anna <laughs> you have a good day <laughs> that's all people want they just want someone to text back to yeah it's bad it's not good there's nothing prediction Sam Altman's public enemy number one
But the cat will be way too far out of the bag. <clears throat> yeah. It's it's already out. It's too far now. The fake fucking everything is out of control. The live filters. Are you seeing on Instagram the live filters people are using? I haven't seen those. So you know before you take a picture and you filter it, face tune, whatever. Now they're just live. What you look like in real life and then you add this filter, live, real time, video. You look amazing. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. Best of luck for everyone in the new AI world. Nuts. I think it's going to get banned. All of it. I don't know. We can't ban anything. I think we thought so, social media was just the, the warning shot. Yeah. AI is the death blow. Yeah. It's the worst thing in the world. I'm so terrified of it. Mm -hmm. And we're funding it outrageously. I saw a pre-revenue company get $300 million from the most notable venture capitalist. Which one? I didn't uh, see. Tome. T-O-M-E. It's for PowerPoint. That's the name of the company? Yeah. And who backed them? Lightspeed, Greylock, you name it. Everyone did it. So that's a business to business use case, but it's just a matter of time. Yep. There's un unlimited dry powder that needs to go to work. And look, if you're just looking at a pure capitalist standpoint, shit, I'd be investing in it too. It you works. Have to. You have to. It works. I get it. Um, all right, moving on. Did you watch the new season of Succession, episode one? I did. Watch it last night. Really good. Great. I have no idea what happened the last three seasons because I basically watched TV on my phone. Um, but I gathered what's going on. I actually tried to watch this as a full episode. It was incredible. Yeah. It was really good. The other piece to it is there's a mansion in LA and it has now kind of gone viral. So the mansion from episode one. Yeah. It's clearly there in LA. Yeah. It's gone viral. Where's, it, the, where's the house? It's in Palisades. Okay. It looks like it's the founder of Luminar Technologies, which... He's 28 years old. 28 years. He bought it when he was 26. Autonomous Austin car, Russell. A CEO of autonomous car tech company, Luminar Technologies. Yeah. He purchased the home for $83 million in after selling stock at in 2021. So he definitely Pe peaked it. Top ticked it. Smart guy. Put in some real estate. I mean, the company doesn't even do 40 million in revenue. And he sold $220 million of stock. Yeah. And now he's famous. Now he's famous. Got a hot house. Good for him. It's a nice house. Beautiful. 85 seems steep for that house. 220 million seems <laughs> steep for his stock. So <laughs> that, you know, he was smart enough to know. And it was a spec. Oh my God, it must be a disaster. Yeah. Oh God, I gotta I gotta see what the ticker is trading at. A laser is a ticker. L A Z R. It's still trading at two or something billion dollar market cap. Wow. Pretty pretty impressive. All right. <clears throat> Moving Oh, speaking of shows, White Lotus next season, Thailand. Ah. Announced today. I'm glad I went to Thailand because now it's gonna be overcrowded. Yes. Thailand was already overcrowded. Yeah, now it's going to be out of this world. I wonder where in Thailand. Kosamui is the rumor. They I have haven't a, been to Kosamui. There must be a Four Seasons there. They have a Four Seasons there. It's insane. White I've, Lotus, yes, good taste. I've been, I've been to that Four It is literally the one of the most insane hotels I've ever been to. It's like epic the way it looks. Yeah. Good taste. Yeah. I like that. Um... All right, uh, last but certainly not least, wedding season is upon us. Weddings generally, attending a wedding, forget putting on a wedding. We know putting on a wedding is obnoxious, obnoxious, expensive. expensive. And I am, we're both, what, almost seven years into our marriage. And when we ask people who've done uh, weddings at similar venues, it seems like the price has doubled. Yep. Which is insane. They, uh, a bank uh, rate, did a survey of what people expect to spend uh, in the weddings, at weddings this year. I mean, it is really tough if you're like in your 30s 
and you live in like an LA or New York, you're, what are you attending? 10 weddings this year? Like right. the, you're in that, like Josh, who I work with, he's got a wedding like every four, six weeks, basically what it was like for us five mm -hmm. years ago. And so this is like average in terms of what people are spending. Um, it is one of the biggest financial concerns for millennials is attending weddings. And God the, forbid you're the one putting on the wedding. Oh, I don't yeah. understand how a millennial that has like a regular job affords a wedding in Southern California. Wedding attendance costs are adding up. Average wedding guest plans to spend an average of $611 per wedding this year. Wedding guests plan to spend a total of 456 on travel and accommodations, 321 on gifts, and 274 on attire and grooming. That is extremely low if you live in LA or New York. Yes. Right? Like that, assuming that as a, if you live in LA and you have a friend getting married. It's a four figure experience. Four figure experience. If you have to go somewhere. And by the way, nobody wants to do a nice local wedding anymore. What Literally, no one wants to do anything where you can just drive and show up and have a good time. Right. No, it has to be in bumblefuck and cost a fortune, right? Like that is the way weddings are done now. Destination weddings. And their goal is obviously just to have a smaller group of people, but everyone shows up. Yeah, I think, well, more than that, it's just keeping everyone. So everyone actually, you got to spend time with your guests. Otherwise, if you live in LA, you're from LA, you have an LA hotel, you're in and out. Yeah. And it says younger generations plan to spend more on wedding. Gen Zers plan to spend the most. They're, they're down to spend $1,200 a wedding where the average is. That's so much money. Yeah. And if you are older, it's potentially a five figure expense. Yeah. And, I, and to be fair, it's a lot more expensive for women. Way more expensive. Yeah, new dress. You got to get a new dress, hair and makeup, hair and makeup, jewelry, shoes. You got like, you know, like when you go out on a bachelor party, you wear a t-shirt and shorts and whatever, you get drunk. Bachelor party, you're taking pictures, you know, you're getting a spray tan, you're doing it all. Good thing interest rates went up. Everyone's got extra cash. Yeah. All that free cash is going to <laughs> weddings. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot. They're not cheap. I agree. It's, Good thing we're past that circuit. I'm I'm so glad. I could not afford to go to any weddings. Because our right weddings now. are five figures now. Yeah. At our age group and friend group. To do anything. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. It's absurd. I, I all my friends who haven't get married, please wait till a full blown recession <laughs> happens because I can't afford. Or a boom time, then you can afford. Assuming I have money. Yeah. In a boom time. Um, because in this current environment, I'll be missing all of your weddings. <laughs> Um, but I do want to talk Adnan before we... What's up with Adnan? He, uh... He's guilty, huh? No, the appellate court overturned his innocence, which we talked about a couple months ago. Guy's been in jail since he was 18 to 31 yeah. or something. Whatever. I thought he was freed. He was freed. And the appellate court ruled that they have to retry because the brother of the victim wasn't in attendance and wasn't given an opportunity to be in attendance. I don't get how that makes sense. The judge threw the case out because of insufficient evidence. Just because the brother wasn't given the proper... You think the judge would have changed her opinion? Yeah. If he was in... But is he not back in jail, though? It's unclear. It's all happening in real time. Wow. This guy thought he was free. He should have been, like, given lectures and shit. He just disappeared to, like, Mexico. Yeah, but I mean, he thinks he's innocent. Was there a whole podcast about this? Serial. That's what <laughs> started podcasts, yeah. really. Like mainstream. Oh, it's rough. All right. Well, um, that's it, folks. We have a special interview to end the episode. Um, our friend George Micaiah, who's actually from Georgia, is a designer. Uh, a luxury designer and it's pretty fascinating uh you know he comes from a very different life than most luxury designers mm -hmm. come from 
And he talks about just growing up in Georgia, coming to America, launching a brand, making his product in Italy. It's an incredible story. Um, and we got someone to give a discount for a luxury brand. It's rare. That is clout, ladies and gentlemen. So stay tuned for the end of this episode to get a discount for a luxury brand, thanks to group chat. Let's get into it. All right, Kathy's. We always like to have, bring interesting people by. Um, today, we have someone not from America. That's uh, rare for us. So we yeah. had George here from Georgia. Uh, welcome to the pod, man. So for people, the Georgia's a country. Um, I assume that. Get no, it. I don't know if people could just think he's from Atlanta. Oh, well, that's where I was born. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where is Georgia? Yeah. Just so I get a sense of the world. <laughs> Okay, thank you guys for for having me. Yeah, uh, actually, it's my first pod in US, so I think it it it, it so uh, I'm George, uh, founder of the Crossy brand in Georgia, like not not the state but the country. It's located like near Turkey and Russia. It's it's the location of the country. Why uh, I would assume like. Having a brand in Georgia and being in fashion in Georgia is better than doing that in America. <laughs> Why did you want to come to America? Uh, so, you know, we, we, so I'm starting the brand in Georgia because of the brand's main values and everything is connected with, with, with my country because of uh, the main like core value of the brand is a freedom. That's uh, we are talking for. We have a lot of like uh, messages. Our like main mission is inspire people for struggle for freedom. If we say in two words, it's like inspire freedom. Yeah. So uh, we have too much freedom in America. Yeah. Yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know that. that, that maybe that's why. Yeah. But for me, like when I started the brand, so main motivation was to create my own product that could be like global with global potential and i think we so us especially in sneaker culture it's like main in the world an important part so we want to expand our like brand and growth in us that's the main reason and you know i've started probably 10 brands in the last 20 years it's really hard I agree. 100 percent. When did you start Cross it, Shoes? It takes a long. It yeah. takes long. So I'm starting working on idea with my brother uh, in 2015. It took like one year on made the working on idea, and we started operating the brand in 2016. Where do you uh, make everything? So we are producing everything in Italy. Okay. So first. So first two years we started producing in Georgia, but we don't have any like big factories there. And when we came to the point that we need uh, more like more capacity of production, more quality we need. And then I, I moved to Italy for some time. I learned that all, all processes of the premium manufacturing of the sneakers and we started producing everything in Italy, the sneakers. We have sunglasses as well. So we are like making everything there with finest materials what what would you say like when when you objectively look at what will make your brand different than what's already out there in the luxury market is it your background where you're from do you think it's more product like what would you because like specifically in luxury i'll give you an example in america i would argue we've only had one american luxury brand breakthrough in the last 30 years and that's Amiri. Like that is the only brand. Amiri. He's a he's a really good friend and like what he did is like insane. Because in in America luxury is Americans want Parisian and Italian luxury, not American luxury, right? The rest of the world appreciates American luxury. I would argue that, you know, a lot of the American brands have done better overseas. Even a brand like Off-White which is an American born designer has done better in Europe and Asia than he did in America. What would you say the price point break is between high end streetwear to luxury, which is what Amiri is. So what's like a pair of a jacket or a shirt have to be to be considered luxury versus just high end streetwear. Um, look, I think Amiri sits with like 
the Saint Laurent and the Gucci's and those worlds. That's like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for a pair of jeans. Yeah, yeah a five hundred dollar t shirt, thousand dollar sneaker. That is like what Saks or Bergdorf, those types of retailers would consider luxury. Would you agree? Yeah, I agree one hundred percent. So Amiri is my like I love Amiri. It's quite inspirational story and the growth that they made it's insane. So well, what about my brand? So our brand is mostly meaningful and we are creating all collections and designs, everything we are creating with some concept behind and all concept messages, uh, collections, everything talks about freedom and inspiration uh, about these values. So for example, uh, we have the first collection, the, that one it's Onda, it's inspired by like forms and uh, waves of the, I love snowboarding as well. Yeah. And it's inspired by snowboarding trails and mountains. You see the lines here, yeah. it's like same. Yeah. So it's, um, it's like talking about uh, freedom, emotions, when people connected with nature and like getting that emotions there. We have another collection, the runner one named the Draw. Draw means time in Georgia. And when the production ends in Italy, when the cleaning stuff and lacing and before the box boxing the shoe, they have the uh, clock there and they are putting exact time before packaging on each shoe, shoe by a special laser marker. Wow. So every sneaker have unique time on it. And we want, so our main message, message with this collection is uh, about time and so you know, freedom and time is quite connected with each other and we want to inspire people. If you don't feel freedom right now, we don't have much time in life and you should start moving now. Yeah. And that's how we are making the products and collections and that's that's makes us different, I think. What to that point, what is like your perception of America? Because you obviously grew up in Georgia. How long have you been in America? Few months, you know. Okay, so you're pretty new. Yeah. What's what's kind of like your in what cities? I ha, yeah. Have you been? What cities have you been to? San Francisco. I was a Salt Lake City on Super Bowl. Okay. It was my f first NFL game as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so on Super Bowl now. Uh, Rihanna was insane. Okay. Because in, in Georgia, NFL is not so popular. We have rugby. Yeah. But not, not NFL. Okay. So it's quite uh, difficult for me, the rules there. Uh, not much, but you know, for sneaker culture that I'm, I'm following the guys, I'm reading a lot of, a uh, lot of media about the sneakers industry. And for me, like, uh, US is, uh, good uh, point for growth brand globally in sneaker industry. Yeah. And I think we, if we will make it here, it will work around the world as well. And after we will, uh, so I want to open the store actually in LA soon. Amazing. And, and we, we want to open LA and Milan at the same time. So it's like Europe will start after the US. That's amazing. But like, what do you think when you landed in LA? What did you think of LA? Was it what you thought it was going to be? Did it live up to the hype? Okay. What, like, what was your perception? What did uh, you think of the homeless people? <laughs> no, it's quite inspirational for me, the place. Uh, so I expected more, it's a little bit slow than I expected. I expected more, more movement and like, uh, like that, but Overall, I, I, I like everything. Okay. So I, I'm living in nearby Rodeo Drive and okay. every morning I'm uh, running. I love running. And every morning I'm running on Rodeo Drive after Beverly Hills houses and coming back and like, writing tasks <laughs> of my day tasks. And yeah, it's quite inspirational for me. And uh, I believe we will open the store here because of we have really interesting uh, concept of uh, the store as well. Yeah. So our store in Georgia, like divided in the two parts in uh, one part is uh, the sneakers that have the values, the like uh, meaningful concepts. And the other part is the art gallery. And we are giving opportunity to young artists and the Georgian artists to make the exhibitions by free 
and we are supporting like you know art is more the most uh, free uh, stuff to like uh, mm, about it and we are giving opportunity to young artists and i want to bring the same concept here as well amazing is um Temna from balenciaga georgian yeah yeah okay. he is a georgian he is from region of Abkhazia as well so what's validate me and my brother to talk about freedom yeah it's the main main question uh, when when the brand has some value so we are from region Abkhazia it is uh, now still is occupied by Russia and you know the freedom so I can't go to my home in, in my country I'm ref refugee in my country and value of freedom is super important for me and for my brother and after the war we lived uh in that region occupied that still like around the russian soldiers and it wow. was like uh, terrible how old uh, were years. you mm, i'm 34. no i'm saying when you had to deal uh, 12. with 12. wow that's crazy i was 12. the Rus russian aggressive very aggressive soldiers there and you can go out and when you see the car coming on, on, across the city you should go run and like hide and that stuff so let's make us that's our validation and that we are talking about freedom we are supporting the people who are refugees we have a lot of programs we supported the ukraine people you know everyone talks about ukraine now but uh, russians made made it in georgia two times wow. last 20, 20 years so what's the view of russia in that part of the world they're just the aggressor is that how they they're viewed yeah sure sure so yeah so for georgian people they they, they have a lot of experience with like with war with russia so yeah that's true that's crazy yeah. um where can are, are is your products available in america right now so we are starting we started from e-commerce first first six months we we uh started with our first collection named the onda and we have a warehouse in california we have like fast delivery returns everything the customer uh care here mm, and the people can buy it uh, through our website it's cross tissues.com cross tissues c-r-o-s-t-y-s-h-o-e-s.com yeah. yep yep and after like so we want to create some community base here make some sales make some community some action some peer activities and after we will bring our all collections here we will start so it's like preparing to uh, opening a flagship store here that's amazing um you know i always ask every guest we need a discount code for our listeners so they can buy on crossyshoes.com. A big a, one. A big one, because I'm sure it's expensive. Like expensive. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So uh, the discount code we would like is group chat, because everyone will remember it. But sure. if you're able to do that, that would mean a lot to our community. Sure. Actually, I, I wanted to say that. Oh, great. <laughs> OK, <laughs> better. So uh, yeah, discount code will be group chat, and okay. it will be 20%. Great, great. Uh, that's amazing. Okay. Well, well, thank you very much. Congrats on uh, launching the brand. I know how hard it is to launch a brand. It's painfully fucking hard. And manufacturing yeah. in Italy is not easy either. So that in itself is a feat. Yeah, really. And obviously just moving across the country to launch a brand is, you know, I'm sure it'll be a special journey. And I think, I think the grit you have from being in a place that was effectively in war, you should have yeah. a leg up against the soft entrepreneurs out here <laughs> yeah like a rich kid from la launching a luxury brand <laughs> that's your competition and the one thing the one thing i'll that. say is you dressed fly that's a nice watch you probably haven't gotten the memo in la be careful <laughs> <laughs> cool cool uh, all right i agree thank I you guess. man i appreciate thank, it thank you thank you for ha having me thank you for everything it was like very good chatting for you where, where can people find you on instagram what's your handle uh George Mikaya, you don't like okay. George M I K A I A. Okay, great. Thank you, man. Thank you. All right, Kathy's. Thanks for tuning in as always, and we will see you back here on Thursday.